get ready. We are going to jump into this book, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Prayer. Hello, and thank you so much for returning to the Dare to Share channel. We're continuing along in the book, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Prayer. We're on chapter nine. This is part two, Hindrances to Answered Prayer. We're going to pick up with number five, Doubt. That's on page 174. I do hope the readings have been a blessing to you and your family. Without further ado, let's pick up on number five, Doubt. Number five, Doubt. If any of you lacks wisdom... He should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. James 1, 5-8 Although we have covered the topic of doubt in other sections of this book, it is such a major hindrance to prayer that we should briefly review it here. Doubt is making a big fuss before God about what you want him to do and then when the prayer is over, not believing a word you said. It is being in a prayer meeting and saying, God, I believe you, and then leaving the meeting muttering, I'm not sure about what we prayed in there. You show that you don't believe when you don't expect the answer, when you don't make arrangements for the answer. For example, if you're praying for someone in your family to become saved, you can buy a Bible for that person ahead of time. That's believing. If you're praying for someone to be healed, you can arrange to take the person out to eat. Tell the person, I'm inviting you out to dinner. Why? I prayed for you to be healed. I expect you to be healed. I'm making arrangements. When you get to the point that God manifests your healing, I'm going to take you out to dinner. The scriptures tell us that we must believe. Let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, Instead of doubting, let us trust the generosity and kindness of God, putting our faith in his character and word. Number six, wrong motives. The Bible says that if your motives are wrong, your prayers will be hindered. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. Ask amiss that you may spend what you get on your pleasures, James 4, 3. What are your motives for praying? Are you asking God for something just so you can promote your own ego or for other selfish purposes? Or are you asking God to fulfill his word so that his kingdom can come on the earth? God knows we have needs, and it's not wrong to request that he fulfill them based on his word. Jesus said, Your father knows what you need before you ask him, Matthew 6, 8. Yet our main focus should be honoring God and promoting his purposes. When we have our priorities right, we can trust him to meet our daily needs. Jesus promised us, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, when you pray, check your reasons for praying. Ask God to forgive you for any wrong motives you may have and to enable you to develop the right motives through the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose, Philippians 2.13. Number seven, bitterness. Bitterness is a dangerous thing, especially in regard to prayer. It often indicates a hidden hatred. Bitterness means you're holding something against someone and not releasing that person through forgiveness. 
you hurt yourself more than the person against whom you are bitter. When you hold on to bitterness, it goes to the very source of your life and dries it up. Not only will you be affected spiritually, but you will also begin to wither mentally, socially, and physically. It is like a cancer. We should reserve our hatred for the devil alone. How does bitterness affect your prayer life? The Bible says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Psalm sixty-six, eighteen. Bitterness is iniquity. God hates iniquity more than sin. If a distinction between the two is possible, iniquity is a special kind of sin. The Hebrew word for iniquity is avon. It means perversity or moral evil. Any rebellion against God is considered sin. However, iniquity is a vicious kind of sin that God specifically says he hates. In Hebrews 1 9, we read, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. The Greek word for iniquity in this verse is anomia, which means lawlessness or an offense against the law. Iniquity is a secret sin, not in the sense that you go off somewhere to commit it, but in the sense that it is something you can't see, such as jealousy. For example, it is when you smile at someone, but you're really envious of what that person has. Or when you hug somebody during a church service and say, God bless you, but you really despise the person. That's iniquity. God says he hates that kind of sin more than any other. Therefore, he says that if we willfully hold such things in our hearts, it doesn't matter how long we pray. He won't hear us. Bitterness is an especially hideous, dangerous sin. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Hebrews twelve fifteen. To guard against this sin and keep our prayers from being hindered, we need to maintain transparent, pure hearts before God and man. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32. Unforgiveness. Like bitterness, unforgiveness will hinder your prayers by blocking your relationships with God and other people. Mark eleven twenty five says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Unforgiveness can be an underlying presence in our lives, even when we don't realize we're harboring it in our hearts. Have you forgiven your ex-wife, ex-husband, boyfriend, or whoever it is that makes you angry every time you think about him or her? How about a member of the church who hurt you or a friend who owes you money? How about someone on the job who wronged you? Someone you're still mad at after three weeks, six months, or even ten years? These things can block your prayer life because you are nurturing an unforgiving spirit. The Bible says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Ephesians four twenty six through 27 Unforgiveness does not reflect the character of Christ. It demonstrates ingratitude for the vast forgiveness God has extended to you. Jesus made this point very clear in the parable of the unforgiving servant in Matthew 18:23 through 35. You need to resolve issues of unforgiveness in your life if you want God to hear your prayers. Number 9, broken family relationships. Broken family relationships in the home, between a husband and wife, for example, will also hinder your prayers. 1 Peter 3, 7 says, Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, 
so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Peter was saying, Husbands, dwell with your wives with understanding, and don't let there be any animosity between you, lest your prayers be hindered. Although he was speaking specifically to husbands, the same principle may be applied to relationships between any family members, since the law of unforgiveness applies to everyone. As believers, the Spirit of God dwells within us. Therefore, we are to demonstrate the nature of God to one another. Psalm 103, 8-10 tells us, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. If we do not demonstrate the love, compassion, forgiveness, and grace of God to others, we are misrepresenting him. How can we ask him to fulfill his purposes by answering our prayers when we are violating those very purposes by the way we treat others. Matthew 5:23 through 24 says, If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. If there are broken or hurting relationships in your home, God is saying in effect, don't come to church to pray. Stay home and reconcile before you come. If you try to worship and praise while ignoring the fact that your relationships are strained or estranged, you're going to end up wasting your time before God. Put those relationships right and then go worship and pray. Also, if you're in a worship service or prayer meeting and God shows you a relationship that needs to be mended, yield to the Holy Spirit's prompting and make things right as soon as you can. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Romans twelve seventeen through 18. Number 10, idols. Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I let them inquire of me at all? Ezekiel fourteen three. Emphasis added. In this sobering verse, God is saying, I will not answer your prayers if you are seeking idols. He's not speaking of statues. He's referring to idols of the heart. We must be careful not to set up idols in our lives, however subtle they may be. Cable television can be an idol. Your car can become an idol. Clothes can become... Clothes can be idols. Your wife and children can be idols. A boyfriend or girlfriend can be an idol. Your reputation can be an idol. An idol is anything we give higher priority than God. The displacement of God from his rightful position in our lives can be gradual. It can happen without our realizing it. We need to examine our lives to see what is most important to us, what our priorities are, and how we are spending our time. God deserves our primary love, respect, and devotion. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Number 11, stinginess. Finally, an ungenerous heart can hinder your prayers. Proverbs twenty one thirteen says, If a man shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. God is telling us that if we are stingy, it can prevent our prayers from being heard. How can we ask God to provide for our needs when we're not concerned about the needs of those who are less fortunate than we are? However, if we are compassionate and generous, if we are givers, we can be assured that our prayers will be answered. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Proverbs 11.25 A generous man will himself be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. Proverbs 22.9 In addition, when we are generous toward God, he promises to provide for us abundantly. 
Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for, room enough for it. Malachi 3.10 Throw off your hindrances. Hebrews 12.1 says, Let us throw off, lay aside, everything that hinders, and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us determine through God's grace to remove these hindrances from our lives so we can live in harmony with God and others and have confidence and effectiveness in prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as your word says, we are burdened by things that hinder us spiritually and emotionally, and we too easily become entangled with sin. These encumbrances keep us from having a joyful, unbroken relationship with you and with our families, friends, co-workers, and others. We ask you to enable us to have a true understanding of who we are in your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to clear away each of the hindrances in our lives so we can live freely as your children and so we can pray in harmony with your will and purposes for the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is our burden bearer, who has carried our sins and sorrows, who has healed us by his own wounds and whose suffering on our behalf has brought us peace with you. Isaiah 53, 4-5. Amen. Putting prayer into practice. Ask yourself, is there anything in my life that is keeping me from a clear conscience and unbroken fellowship with God? Have I confessed my sins to God and asked His forgiveness? Have I accepted the forgiveness of God or am I still holding on to past sins and guilt? Have I recognized that I am a child of God? Have I thought about what my relationship with God really means? What are my motives when I pray? Am I harboring bitterness or unforgiveness against anyone? Action steps. If you find yourself beginning to doubt after you have prayed, consciously replace those doubts with what the Word of God says about your situation. If there are relationships in your life that need mending, ask God to help you let go of any bitterness. Take a step this week to repair one of those relationships by forgiving someone or asking for forgiveness. Write down anything you think you are putting ahead of God in your life, such as money, a relationship, or your career. Offer it to God and begin to renew your love and commitment to Him this week by spending extra time worshiping Him and acknowledging His fatherhood and His sovereignty in your life. Principles Major hindrances to prayer are... 1. Sin. If we humble ourselves, seek God, and turn from sin, God will forgive us and hear our prayers. 2 Chronicles 7.14 2. Fear. Fear blocks our prayers by undermining our faith. We must accept God's forgiveness and the new spirit He has given us, one of power, love, and a sound mind. 3. Guilt. To be free from feelings of condemnation, we must realize that God not only has forgiven us, but has also forgotten our sins. Therefore, we can pray with a clean conscience and with assurance. 4. Feelings of inferiority. As God's beloved children, we're not beggars in prayer. We can pray confidently based on God's word, Jesus' testimony, and the Spirit's advocacy. 5. Doubt. Doubt hinders our prayers because we don't truly believe what we're saying. We show our trust in God by making arrangements for the fulfillment of our request. 6. Wrong motives. When we have our priorities right, putting God's kingdom and honor above all else, He will hear our prayers and meet our daily needs. 7. Bitterness. God will not hear our prayers if we are holding on to iniquity in our hearts, such as jealousy. We need to maintain transparent, 
pure hearts before God and man. 8. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness hinders our prayers by blocking our relationships with God and others. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 says, Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. 9. Broken family relationships. God will not answer our prayers if we violate his purposes by failing to demonstrate his love and grace to our family members. We must reconcile broken relationships as soon as we can. 10. Idols. We need to examine our priorities. Anything we value more than God is an idol and will hinder our prayers. God deserves our highest love and respect. 11. Stinginess. Proverbs 21.13 says, If a man shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and not be answered. If we are stingy, we won't be heard, but if we are compassionate and generous, our prayers will be answered. Friend, thank you so much for following along with me today in the reading of Dr. Miles Monroe's book, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Prayer, Earthly License for Heavenly Interference. I do hope the readings have been a blessing to you and your family. As always, God bless and have a wonderful day. Bye.